Hello, my name is Daniel Orles. I'm the head of classics at King's College London, and I'd like to introduce to you today the Greek poet Sappho. She is one of the most famous poets uh, from Greek antiquity, and her poems about love, about desire, have influenced a whole history, a whole 2,000 years uh, of poets writing about love. In fact, we can't really express how we love each other without actually being influenced by Sappho. We think she lived between around 630 and 570 BCE. We don't really have much evidence about her life. She came from the island of Lesbos and she was born into what we think was a wealthy aristocratic family. But we only possess small fragments of her poems. And I'd just like to introduce to you guys today fragment number 31. And it's a remarkable and very special poem. The poem opens by comparing a man to the gods. It's like she's looking back to earlier poetry by someone like Homer, epic poetry, poetry about great heroes who did great heroic feats just as if they were gods on the battlefield. But then suddenly in line two we get a surprise. This guy's only like the gods because he sat next to you, a beautiful woman. So straight away, this poem seems to be an, a very anti-epic sort of poem, a very different sort of enterprise. Uh, it's not a poem in celebration of a great martial feats done by men, but it's a poem, a much more private poem, about a dress from one woman to another. And Sappho is excluded. She's looking at a man sat next to a woman, Maybe they're at a wedding party, maybe they're getting married. We don't really know the full context. And Sappho talks about the, beautiful, the sweet speaking of the woman. She talks about the woman's delicious laughter. But in contrast to the woman's beautiful voice, Sappho then talks about the effect that this voice has on her. She, she says, my tongue is broken. There's a fire going across her skin. She can't see anymore. Her ears are buzzing as if Sappho is falling apart. She says, I'm greener than grass, or I'm paler than grass. And she says, I think I'm dead. The Greek itself is amazing. The words for I am, in I am greener than grass, in the Greek is placed right next to the word, I am dead. Emi, I am, tethnaken, I have died. Sappho says she's both alive and dead at the same time. So this is a poem of paradoxes, a poem that compares a man to a, an epic hero, but only because he's next to a woman, a poem that celebrates the voice, the beautiful voice of a woman, and yet a poem that also focuses on the dissolution of the female poet's voice. She's both alive and dead at the same time. It's ironic that we only have fragments left of Sappho, because it's almost as if Sappho is a fragment, always already, in this poem right from the beginning.